Well, what a night. What a night. And congratulations. And I'll say it again later to all the nominees and all the winners. And I want to thank by, start by thanking the RTS for this award. It really is a huge honor. And now, at last, my late mother might realize that what I've been doing all these years was a real job of sorts. <laughs> I've been traveling south from Glasgow and back again with the vagaries of both the British transport system and the British weather so much over the past 40 years that for me, career has been more of a verb than a noun. <laughs> this Lifetime Achievement Award is definitely more of a joint effort, both at home and in the workplace. I'd like to thank my husband, Alan Clements, for his wise counsel and constant support. And Joanna Kay, my dear friend and agent for her steadying and sometimes restraining hand. Colleagues, I'll come on to later. <laughs> Being a producer who became a presenter was a great benefit to me. I've often talked about the perils of ever thinking myself to be the most important person on the show. That is definitely not the case. It never has been and it never will be. Funnily enough, I can remember that when I was a young teenager watching I'm pretty sure it was in black and white. Joan Bakewell and Dennis Toohey live on late night lineup, never imagining that one day I'd have the privilege years later of presenting the direct descendant of that program, though sadly, I never got the chance to smoke on television. <laughs> but the alchemy of politics and international affairs and culture was definitely in my DNA right from the start. Newsnight runs through me like lettering on a stick of rock. I have wonderful friends and colleagues I've known for years and years, and others I've only known for a few months, and couldn't indeed be my children. <laughs> They're all super bright, a wonderful curiosity about the world. Some former editors are here. Peter Barron, Esme Wren, Stuart McLean is probably drinking with us in Nairobi, and Rosie Seed and Becky Emmett, our recent crack duo who have steered the news night ship brilliantly. But I'll always be especially grateful to my first editor, Tim Garden, who wrote to me, that's something we used to do with a piece of paper, a pen, and a stamp, in 1991, and asked me to join the Newsnight presenting lineup. He became the only, the only the third person to know I was pregnant. I didn't think it was the best timing, and I said no, reluctantly. Never did I think he'd ask me again 18 months later. And the last 30 years have been the most extraordinary, amazing, neon colored roller coaster. Of late, though, it has felt very much that Newsnight has been under siege. By the way, that phrase follows the Economist magazine style guide of understatement. We, all of us, are aware that viewing habits are changing fast. We know the BBC News has to save many millions of pounds. But especially in these times of great peril around the world, Newsnight is a big brand that delivers big interviews, distinctive analysis, and discussions of great breadth and depth, and sometimes live music and poetry too. And you know we will still do that. Back in the midst of time, when Mark Thompson was DG, he wanted to move us to 11 o'clock. Led by one of our former editors who's actually in the room tonight, we mounted a rearguard action, which won the day. When next Mark Thompson was being interviewed on tape by something quite different by a Newsnight producer, he paused and said, you know, you lot think you're the fucking Sistine Chapel. <laughs> well, clearly we're not. <laughs> but I do feel sometimes that we really need to shout and celebrate what we've done. Like the Tavistock investigation that wouldn't have happened unless we had a strong editor like Esme Wren. Like Mark Urban's extraordinary European work, like our year-long journalism invest journalistic investigations of the NHS, it's what we will continue to do as a program under a new format, gear up for the election, plan these programs. Nothing stands still, nor should it. We are one of the BBC's biggest brands, and I hope we'll still be one of the BBC's biggest brands in another 10 years. The BBC has been very good to me since I joined as part of the graduate entry program at the tender age of 21. But I like to think I've done my bit for the BBC, as many of you have done too. The phrase, the BBC's journalism, sometimes make it sound a bit rarefied, rather than the work of hundreds of us, dedicated reporters, assignments desks, camera crews, editors and graphics. We all do what we do because we're passionate about the need for the best journalism and have always striven for journalism without fear or favor. That goes for all the nominees tonight, all the winners, and I'm so proud to be among you. Thank you very much for the RTS. <laughs>